My name is Thomas Diaz. I am the director of the Fabla Barcelona at the Institute for Advanced Architecture of Catalonia. And I have been working with the FabLab network for the last um, around eight years when the first FabLab started. Um, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to share with you some of our, our projects, also our thoughts, and, and also our visions on the future of fabrication, especially in the cities. Through the Fab City project, which will be explained at the end, but as has been mentioned before, this, we're talking about access to tools. Um, but not tools just to make things, uh, but probably to tools that help us to make tools, and that infinitely, right? Uh, in order to address big questions uh, of the future of society, humanity, and even the life in the planet. Um, and this is not new. I think, we, I think we have been trying to make these questions for for not only decades, for probably centuries. Um, but I'd really like um, to mention the whole Earth Catalog as uh, probably the, one of the starting points of the whole uh, modern version of the making culture uh, that we know today. And probably and the offline version of Make Magazine with probably more philosophical view about making. And, um, and also in a, mo in a moment in which the access to computers and internet was starting. Um, if you think about that access to these new methods of interaction, communication, production, uh, as you know, mobile phones, computers that you're using today, or those things connected uh, in real time with other devices, with other people, have allowed us to turn into producers of things. Producers of, in this case, that thing is content, no? Digital content. But then, uh, what is important now that this digital revolution uh, hasn't happened yet in fabrication. Um, and we are trying to work on that. That's what we're trying to do in Fab Labs. Work on digital fabrication, the real digital fabrication, not 3D printers, but actually the future of digital materials and making through programming things or growing things instead of using a machine to process an analog material. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Fab Labs. And, and probably some of you have heard that these are places that um, is full of nerds that are pretending to be cool. Or, or if they are elitist and closed inside universities uh, with very expensive machines uh, that probably they are not needed while you can use just hand tools, right? But there is some meaning for, for on one hand, using uh, fabrication equipment that is connected to a computer. Uh, the, all the components that exist in a fab lab, the set of tools, um, allow us to make almost anything from microcontrollers, circuit boards, customized in different applications to houses, uh, bicycles, furniture, and so on. No? Um, so the purpose of having the same set of tools, the same inventory, is based on that this is a network. This is a network that it doesn't work uh, exactly at the city scale, but actually works in a, in a world scale. So when you want to exchange in a global scale with a network, you need to have the proper means to do it. And then the digital communications allow us to exchange files, instructions to make things. But then in order to do that, you need to have compatible technology that actually makes you uh, happy when you can design something in Cape Town and you can just send a file to Norway and have it done in the same day, right? So this network uh, gathers uh, in conferences every year. This is an image from the Fab Six in Amsterdam that happened in 2011. And uh, last year, we organized the Fab 10 conference in Barcelona. This year was in Boston, uh, which is kind of a home of where it all, it all started at MIT. And um, next year, it's going to be in Shenzhen, which is really we're trying to connect with that uh, making culture that Liz was mentioning and uh, the scalability of manufacturing. Um, uh, not only of things, but actually trying to think about China as a factory of, fa of factories. Um, we shared a common educational programs. In this case, the Fab Academy is actually allowing people to learn how to make almost anything with those things that helps you to make almost anything. So, 
Fab Labs are not only about spaces and machines, but it's actually about knowledge, which is actually shared and you know, is taken by people through a program that is running every year from January to June. It's a whole diploma offered by the Fab Lab Network. It's also research, um, and as I said before, if you can make things, uh, or if you can make almost anything, then you can make the things that make almost anything, right? And so this is an ongoing research program, which is the machines that make, um, which aims to lead the Fab Labs into uh, self-replicating Fab Labs, and China will play an important role here. And then it's also thinking about the future without the machines. And this is the recently launched class uh, in the FabLab network that is called How to Grow Almost Anything. Not only how to make almost anything, but how to grow almost anything. It's not about weed growing or, or just vegetables, but it's actually how to play with biology in order to um, not only modify, but create your own materials, create your own structures that can grow itself into things, right? which we think is the, is the future of fabrication. So this is what is happening, more or less, the state of, uh, of uh, in the large network of Fab Labs in a, in a, in a global scale. In Barcelona, um, uh, the Fab Lab is located, as I said, in a, inside the Institute for Advanced Architecture of Catalonia, which is a huge warehouse in the old industrial area and the 22 watt district. If you ever go to Barcelona, come and visit us. Um, it's a, at least a funny place uh, to see people around making stuff. Um, and we, and EAC does uh, probably uh, uh, mostly three main activities. Education through master courses in architecture and design, uh, research uh, with companies and also through normal funding, and then production. So we make professional works uh, of creating projects for clients. Um, research like uh, having architects designing the tools that construct the building and not only the building itself. This is a research project on 3D printing clay using a six-axis robot. This is uh, robots that can print things that are bigger than themselves. If you have a 3D printer, you can only print things that fit into the 3D, print, into the 3D printer. So if you want to print this building, you will need something bigger than this building. So if you have a swarm of robots, you can have tiny robots making things that are bigger than them. Um, making open source houses. This is the Fab Lab house we did in 2010. Uh, you can download the files and make it locally. It's an internet or wiki site, but also the house itself was a manifesto of what a self-sufficient house should be, producing the energy that it needs and creating uh, systems embedded in its own design to control the climate inside the house and the like. And to some other iterations of, of this project. So this is more or less uh, how these things look like, no? So the, the, uh, I already explained the, uh, the mini builders project, the small robots printing things that are bigger than themselves, but also uh, if in the lower uh, right corner, you see the material project uh, developed by some of our students of the master's program, uh, Peter Novikov and Sasha Jockey, uh, together with Jory Slatman Studio in Amsterdam, printing uh, without gravity. So it was mostly a, a polyurethane foam that will be dried using um, a heat, uh, hot air guns in this case. And then the, the house uh, low left is actually a second iteration of the Fab Lab house, in which is, it was sitting in, in the port of Barcelona. We did it for a, for a, a demonstrator of a smart city of an er, a energy company in Spain. And then to the fab condenser that is in the top uh, right corner, which was a prototype of a house that like we did in probably five days uh, for the fab conference. Um, so we also do other type of things. This is uh, another project that, is, uh, as, as, I, as I said before, we can make houses, but we, we can also make circuit boards that capture data from the environment and they share it in an open source way. This is a smart citizen project that we started um, uh, three years ago, crowdfunded a, comp a couple times, and now taken into a next level um, into the use of open source technologies for smarter cities or, city or smart citizens produced by smart citizens. Um, through other projects related with textiles, maybe con could be considered another scale of architecture. Uh, Marina and Gerard, you have been collaborated with some of this research uh, at IAC. To, uh, uh, we just we recently bought uh, uh, an entire farmhouse, like 25 um, 
minutes from the Barcelona center. This is 150 hectare property. So we have our own forest and we, are, we have a, the Green Fab Lab inside this house in which we're playing uh, with the, you know, the material flows um, uh, in relation with nature, but also creating projects that help to either to monitor uh, nature or to help farming, beekeeping, and so on. So that's more or less the activities of, of, of IAC and, and the Fabla Barcelona. And, um, and then um, the question is, uh, so what, we, what, what had we done beyond that like, doing our own research and our own pro, uh, projects from our doors inside? So this is where it comes, um, what I think that how we have impacted Barcelona and probably impact other cities in the world. So we launched the Fab City project uh, a couple of years ago with the idea of connecting this, uh, these principles of distributed manufacturing, open source, um, and distributed networks on, uh, on, the, on the creation of a new way of doing urbanism, right? Um, basically, um, this is the same idea of, of access to tools, but updated to 2015, which is basically bringing, man, bringing back manufacturers for the, manufacturing for the users, but this might work, probably this would look like a garage in the United States, but the truth is like the organizations of European cities is, is quite different. People, they don't have, you know, it's very difficult to have a garage, at least in Barcelona, I know you have houses, more houses here in London. So then this, it basically, um, the whole rationale comes, the, the, the rationale becomes different in the sense that there is a need of shared spaces rather than individual spaces in your house. And also, the, um, uh, this idea is connected with the complementary of the skills, the, the, compl the complementary role of skills in these shared spaces, and also the change of scales. Uh, in, in the case of, you, do, you cannot make a house in, the living, in your living room with this, your tiny 3D printer. So this is um, a Barcelona Fab Lab network proposed uh, by us to the, to the former city council, and I will talk about it. But it's also, um, um, if you think about the city, it's not only about Fab Labs connected with the only principle that I mentioned before, but actually the, the whole Fab City approach is, is trying to understand the, the city itself as an ecosystem. It's, this has been mentioned before, um, and not only about the you know, places that are around making or the like, but also the connection with industry. For instance, in Barcelona, it's something, it's very interesting that the, there is like a, the, the worldwide uh, headquarters of HP. I don't know if that good, is that good or bad, but then we have other companies develop uh, local uh, 3D printers and then spaces that offer manufacturing services more like a business. Then you have like community maker spaces, then you have like a more university-based maker spaces. So it's a whole, like a, um, you know, um, like a whole set of ingredients that is happening in a, in a quite small city. If you think about Barcelona as a 1.5, 1.6 million people city. So what we, what we understand is that we are building um, not only for a circular economy, but actually we are building for what we call a spiral economy. It's not only infinite recycling of, of shit inside the city, but actually going somewhere, right? So uh, what we think is that the, the democratization of these tools is, is actually allowing to, to think about that C-axis or that different axis in which circularity should move and is the participation of the citizens. But in order to do this, you need to um, convince some people if you want to scale, if you want to go beyond having the small community doing things. Um, and we did that exercise in a very strange way. Um, this group of people, uh, the guy with the glasses and the white hair is the mayor of Barcelona. The other three guys, they are co-founders of the Institute for Advanced Architecture of Catalonia. And these three guys became, one is the, became the chief architect of the city, the other one became the deputy mayor of the city, and the other one became the, uh, the director of a re uh, regional studies agency. So we basically, IAC and Fabla Barcelona took the city in 2011. Uh, and, and that's why we managed to actually put into the poly public policy the development of this new infrastructure called Fab Labs. And not only that, but we actually, we kind of make the measure to press a button to commit to turn Barcelona into a self-sufficient city in the, next, in the next 40 years. A easy task, because in 40 years he will be dead. And, <laughs> and it's even easier because he's no longer the mayor. 
So what happened is that the, uh, what was really interesting is that during those 40 years in which uh, this, they were part of the city council, what we saw is that our initial project was taken and reinterpreted by the government, which is a big, uh, or, or it could be dangerous. It means that they changed the name of the Fab Labs and they put it Ateneus de Fabricación. <laughs> so when you ask people, or people try to ask you, which are these places, are they Fab Labs? I say, yes, they are Fab Labs. But then when you ask the city council, uh, no, no, they are not fab labs. They are places that they are trying to bring access to tools to people, okay, in an open way, okay. So the thing is that um, there are challenges. There are three fab labs open, uh, all public fab labs, plus all this ecosystem in Barcelona, right? And some of those challenges come when you have a new major coming or a new policy making. Uh, and then you just have to talk again with people, and then you have to go beyond until, uh, that understanding uh, Fab City approach uh, should be more than just a public Fab Labs opened by the, the, you know, the current government. And what is even more interesting is that they, what we started in Barcelona, um, it became a global initiative. So what is really funny is that we are still developing what, what, what are we doing, and, but we get like emails, uh, every month, or maybe a couple or three every month, saying, hey, we are the city of, and we want to join the Fab City. <laughs> so what we did is like, um, now we have a, a year cycle in which new cities can join to, the, to become part of the Fab City initiative. And for that, we require like, the commitment of uh, civic leaders in those cities. In this case, during the last uh, Fab Lab conference in, in Boston, we added to the Fab City challenge of becoming self-sufficient in 40 years to other seven, well, other four, uh, I think three, uh, sorry, five cities and one region in India, Kerala, and a country, which is Georgia. Um, so, but then, you know, what, what, what is that? What is the Fab City? Is, is public Fab Labs? Is just fa uh, maker spaces connected? Uh, is just people 3D printing keychains? Um, so we now starting to develop, um, um, or trying to, not, not to, we have been developing it, but we're trying to put it more clear or more into, into words what we really want to do, uh, which is not connected for what many people want to do at the same time. So we are kind of reinventing the wheel, the wheel, the wheel somehow, and trying to connect it with existing networks. That's, that's the whole approach. But there are some principles, and there are some kind of challenges that, that we understood uh, that we need to address. Um, the first one, very first one, is identifying which are the metrics in which you, me you measure self-sufficiency. When you talk about materials or imports, exports, uh, water, energy, how do you measure those things? How do you get that data? Uh, and how do you actually make it understandable and shared between cities? No? Um, and that's, that's the very first challenge, is uh, identifying which are those things that we want to use to measure how a city can become self-sufficient. And then, using those principles, then you can use the body of knowledge and manufacturing capabilities of a network like the FabLab network, in this case, is the one that is more approachable for us, of course, to develop uh, projects and solutions to actually change those metrics somehow. And even actually develop, develop projects and solutions to do those metrics, right? Um, then it's also developing strategies in the use of, of new technologies to go towards a new govern, no governance uh, model, at least within the FabLab network or, or new organizations. And here as well, uh, blockchain is a new technology uh, appearing in which we are going to try to apply it into the FabLab network to not only share information, share uh, files, but actually try new organization and governance uh, models. So. The, the, the big challenge here is really assembling a local team rather to have a major taking a picture every year saying I'm part of a fat city, how cool I am. But it's actually engaging people every month, every week to have meetings. Uh, this was yesterday, our very first meeting. You know, you ha we had like five people joining in. Uh, that's the, the, the very true from the beginning. And then we had another like on-site meeting yesterday as well with the Spanish uh, uh, Fab Labs, which were like 20. So the, the most challenging thing is actually get things done with people. Uh, and that's something that 
we see as uh, you know our next our very next uh, task instead of keep talking about the future visions. So yeah, I think that at the end what we are trying to do through this project is actually be, uh, build a distributed data manufacturing infrastructure for actually the, constru the construction for a new economy. Um, here the real challenge is, is not only have the self-satisfaction of making something that you designed yourself and then share it with someone and then him replicate it just because it's cool, but it's actually trying to affect larger systems uh, um, that actually are going to be the ones that will determine which is the future of us as a society. As a, and again, it might sound weird, but as a planet. Uh, but yeah, it's basically how to change almost anything, I guess. So thank you.